Okay, now Daf Vav on the pages of the Gemara, twelve, page six B. The Kulhu Kitfu Baadre, and obviously in God's hand tefillin, they're not putting put in uh, different compartments because you know that there's a fundamental difference between the head tefillin and the hand tefillin. The head tefillin, there's four different compartments. Same thing with God's his. One that he puts on his arm, so to speak. This is all a, a parable we said. That's all put into one parchment. If you're accustomed to coming to synagogue every day and you miss one day, God asks, where are you? Who is amongst my servants that listens to me that went in darkness and there was no light for him? So Rav Volbe in Ali Shor explains that a person that's accustomed to do a mitzvah or the netziv explains it's like a neder. When you go to a certain shul every day, the Shekhinah is waiting for you. And when you don't go, God asks the angels, why didn't this guy show up to where he belongs? So it says, Im ledvar mitzvah halach no galo. If he's gone for a mitzvah, then there should be light for him. He should be successful in his endeavor. Vim ledvar reshut halach en no galo. But if he went for some voluntary thing and he jeopardized his service of God, of attending the house of God, then ain't no galo. Then he shouldn't be enlightened. He shouldn't be successful. Why? Yiftach b'shem Hashem. He should have trusted God. My time, huh? why does God not want him to be successful? God doesn't bless his endeavor. Because it says, because he should have trusted God and he didn't. So parenthetically, our, my Rebbe Zatzal Harav Eliezer ben David said that it's a wonderful thing always to try to set up your traveling. Some people travel on a weekly, monthly basis, bi-weekly basis. It's always wonderful, if possible, to schedule it that you don't miss your tefillah in your makom kavua. And it says, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, B'Shashar L'Shbaruch Hu Ba B'Bet Knesset, V'Lo Matza Asara, Miyad Hu Ko'es. When God, when there's supposed to be a minion in Shul, and there isn't, right away God gets angry. Shneemar Madu Abati Ve'en Ish, Karati Ve'en One. That's why, if we learn the Mesilat Yesharim, one of the most important books of Jewish ethics, it's so important to be swift in the service of God. If you have an appointment with God, you should come on time. That's why, at least half an hour before, you should be planning to get where you're going. If tefillah in the morning is 7 a.m., you should be up by 6.30 preparing and getting ahead to come there. Because if God comes and the minion should start at 7 and they're not a, they don't start on time, it shows that it's not serious for us. Just like you don't miss your airplane ticket, if you have a flight to Israel or Hawaii, you would be there on time. Same thing, you have an appointment with God, you need to come on time. And God forbid we don't need God to get angry at us. So it says, Whoever has a specific place, a set designated place to pray. So halachically, this is a halacha. It's called the makom kavua. Whether in the synagogue or whether in your home, you should, shouldn't sit in a different place part of the synagogue every time. It's brought down in the post scheme that of course always you have to use common sense. If there's a visitor sitting in your place and by you attacking him or as long as you're within eight feet of where you usually sit, Rabbi Moshe and the post scheme said first of all that's considered makam kavua and also um, if you're angry you shouldn't attack somebody that by mistake sat in your seat because this is only a rabbinic or idea. But to, God forbid, make another Jew feel inferior, I believe it's Rav Chaim Filaji that brings that, that's a much worse 
sin. So, and it says, whoever does this, the God of Abraham, Elohe Avram Ba Bezor, comes to help him. Ukishemet, when he passes away, Omrim Lo, Ei Ana Vechasim Mitavidam Shavam Rabinu. They're going to say this person was such pious, such a humble person. He's a, he was from the students of Avraham. Avraham Avinu Minalan de Kavam Makom. How do we know Avraham Avinu had a designated place to daven, to pray? Dichtiv, the Gemara answers, Vayeshkem Avraham Baboker El Makom Asher Amad Sham. Avraham went to pray in the place that he had previously stood. So I believe it's the Taz that explains the, the Slach also brings down that. Why is this such a great thing? Because when you pray, you're bringing God's presence from the heavens down to where you're praying. So the holiness is ingrained in that area where you're praying every time. So it causes that your prayers should go up the next time. And anybody that knows, knows that since this is your specific designated place, it can create more concentration. And that's why it's such a wonderful thing. Then Amidah la tefillah, and standing is only praying, because we learned that from Pinchas, Shneemar va Yamot Pinchas va Yipalel. Pinchas stood and he prayed. Amar Rav Chel bo Amar Rav Huda Yotzei Mivet Kesed Ay Pesach Gesad. This is also a halacha in Shulchan Aruch and the Rambam. When we leave the synagogue, the Ben Ishcha especially talks about this in, in detail. Ashrei Yoshe Betecha. It's so we're so lucky and fortunate to be in the house of God that when we leave, we shouldn't run away and take big steps. You should. Also, you shouldn't put your back to the Shekhinah. You should walk out, if possible, backwards. The same way if you leave the presence of your Rebbe, your Rav. So it says, don't take large steps when you leave the synagogue. This is only when you leave, but to when you're coming to Shul, it's a mitzvah to run. There's a mitzvah to run after and know God. Rav Zera says, when I, see, when I would see the rabbis run on Shabbat to go to the Torah class, I thought they were desecrating the Shabbat. Because there's a halacha that on Shabbat we're not allowed to talk about business, we're not allowed to exercise and run. The way we walk and talk on Shabbat, we learned this from Yeshaya Navi, Mimso Chemsecha Vedaver Davar, should be different, should be more relaxed. So he thought that by them running to the Torah class, they were desecrating this law. Kevan de Shama Hadar Abtam Chamer Yeshub and Levi, Laulam Yarutz Adam, Ledvar Halacha, and Filu Shabbat, when he heard this halacha, that you should always run. To hear the word of God, the halacha, the Jewish law, even on Shabbat, because it says in the passage, like a lion roars and goes after, you should run after God. Ananami right now, I also walk. So this is a halacha that even though on Shabbat, you, for regular cases, you should not run because it's disrespecting Shabbat. You are allowed to run to the synagogue or Torah class. It is um, absolutely no problem because alikriti, zerizut, is the backbone of our service to God. And the Mesilat Yesharim, being meticulous and careful not to sin and then running towards mitzvot, is the whole ladder of how we get ourselves attached to God. So even on Shabbat, that's fine. Amar Rabzera Igra Debe Amara Papa Amara Papa Igra Debe Tamna Shtikusta. We know that when a person goes to the house of the mourners the true reward that he gets is for being quiet. Amar Abaya, Igra de Kala de When everybody's coming to learn from all over Babylonia, 
on a, or for example, today we have legal holidays and every holidays and everybody who comes to the class, the, the main reward you get is that there's a it's very congested and there's no room there. There's no pain, no gain. Amar Rava, Igra de Shmaita Svara, the main reward for learning Torah is to realize the understand it so deeply that you understand the reasoning behind it. So just I'm gonna do two Rashis. Igra de Pirka. It says, Ikar Kibus Hara Beriot Haratzin Lishmo Adrasham Ipia Hacham, his Hara Merutse, Shurubam Eno Mevinilla Mot Begirs of the Lomashman Pipiramam, Lacharzman, Shagus Hachar. So he says, The main Oh, I apologize, I skipped the Gemara. Amar Abzera, Igra de Pirka Riyuta. The main reward that we get for going to the class is that we run towards it. Because most people don't, if you tell them after the class, that even the Dafyomi summarized the entire Daf for me, they, they, they can't remember it. But at least that, that they ran towards it, that's what they get their main reward for. Amar Abaye Igra de Kala de Chikuta, that we said, the main reward for the... Attending the Torah, Rashi says, Shabbat Shalifnea Regal, Shakulam Nesvan Lishma Halachot Regal. Before every holiday, like uh, Sukkot or Pesach, especially Pesach, everybody would come to learn all the details of the holiday. So that that it's crowded and you still attend, even though it's um, an inconvenience, that's what you get rewarded for. And we said, Rava says, the main reward for. Learning a class, Rashi says, To understand the reasoning. Because ultimately, we say, We always beseech the Almighty that we should have an inner understanding of the Torah's laws. So that's the main reward. Amar of Papa The main reward, and this is where we skipped, I apologize for that. The main reward of going to the house of a mourner is to be quiet and let him talk. The main reward of fasting is the sedaka we give, the charity that we give. Amar The Levaya. The main reward you get for Rashi says, Laharim The person that's eulogizing in a memorial service for somebody that has departed this world and gone passed away is to cause people to cry and obviously for them to repent. Amarav Ashi Igra Lula Mili. The main reward you get for going to a wedding, Rashi says, is lismoch hachatan bidvarim. Like the Gemara in Ketubot says, that you should tell the um, groom at a wedding, kala na'ava chasuda. You have such a wonderful and modest and eshet chayil wife. So you made the right decision and... Um, so they will have a lot of uh, he healthy, happy life together. So kind words of praising the bride, of how great she is, is the main reason you get reward for attending a wedding. A person that davens behind the synagogue is considered evil. So Rashi learns that all the doors to the synagogue were in the east, like it says in the Gemara Megillah, and since they, in Babylonia they would face west, because they were to the west of Israel, and their back was towards the east, Hamit Palel Achare Bet Knesset, Veno Machsir Panav Bet Knesset, if you dive in behind the shul, and don't face the um, 
side where everybody's playing, it's like you're you're, you're praying to another god. Why are you praying in the opposite direction? If you're in Babylonia or Iran, you should be praying towards the west, which is towards Jerusalem. So it says, since you look like a person that's a blasphemy, kekofer, b'misha sibur mitpalalim lefanav. And it says, um, it's like you're praying to another god. So that's why it's bad. Tosfot says that not necessarily. It just if you anytime you pray the opposite direction that the congregation is praying to, again, it looks like you're praying to another god, which is a big sin. It's a big mistake. Abayi says, as long, even if you're not physically inside the synagogue, but you're praying the same direction the people are, then it's not a problem. You're not considered evil. There was a person that was actually doing what we just said. He was praying, but he wasn't praying towards the uh, direction where the whole congregation was. So, Eliyahu, the prophet Eliyahu Hanavi, dressed up and looked like an Arab. He says that you're praying to another god? What? Do you think, God forbid, like Rashi says, that there's two gods? That the uh, congregation, the Sibur, is praying this way and you're praying the opposite way? And he got rid of him. Shalaf Safri the Katli. He took out his sword and uh, terminated the person. What does it mean? What is the meaning of this thing? Krum zelut livne adam. Something exalted is very lowly to people. There's some things that are so have a nuclear power to make the impossible possible, but people just are unfortunately um, belittle it. They don't give it the due respect. They disgrace it. So this is talking about, if you look at Rashi, it's talking about the power of prayer. The best example of this is Le'ah. Le'ah was not even supposed to get married to, to our father, Yaakov. But through her prayer, she both, not only six of his children came from Le'ah because she was crying her eyes out, she became the mother of all the Kohanim and all of the kings of Yehuda and Levi. So prayer makes the impossible possible, and that's why it's so disgraceful and unfortunate that people are on their phones. You have to turn off your phone and turn on life. You turn off your connection to your mini avodazara, which is the phone, and connect to God, which is the source of all blessing. And it says... Another interpretation, Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Eliyazar, the Amr Tavayu, Kevin Sheistach Adam Lebriot, Panav Nishot Konam. It's also very unfortunate if a person needs to collect collect donations, then um, his face changes like um, this bird, because it's very embarrassing to ask for charity handouts. Shenema Krum Zelud Livnei Adam, my Krum. This krum is a type of bird that is found in the islands and when the sun rises, it turns into different colors. So a person may get rejected for asking, for asking for donation. So that's what happens. It's like a person that has to ask for charity. is like getting both thrown into ice cold water and burnt with fire and wa- ice and uh, ice and and fire so it says it says that the 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 mincha we know the gemara is saying you should always be meticulous to pray mincha Especially now that we're in the winter months, it's a very big challenge to do such a thing because 
it is uh, the winter, and the days sometimes are only, depending on where you live, there's only six, seven hours of daylight. All right. So already 4.30, some places 4.15, you need to pray Mincha. But Gemara says, this is actually a halacha, that we should never underestimate the power of Mincha, and uh, never miss it. Because Eliyahu, the big miracle that happened with him, happened in Mincha time. Shneemar ve'yi ba'alot ha-mincha ve'yigesh Eliyahu navim ve'yumer aneni Hashem aneni. He said, God, answer me, God, answer me. Sheteret esh min ha-shamayim. Why did he have to say aneni twice? He said, first of all, send that fiery, send fire from heaven. Va'aneni shelo yamru maser kefeshafim an. And even if the miracle happens, make it that they shouldn't think it's a fake miracle and was done with black magic. So they should see the miracle and also accept it as a miracle, not an illumination uh, of, of black magic. Rabbi Yochanan Amar Av Tefilat Arvid, you should also be very careful to pray Arvid. The offering of the evening, which is the prayer, nightly prayer, because the Jew has to pray three times, so Rabbi Yochanan says the nightly prayer you should also be very careful to always pray. Rav Nachman, Rav Yitzchak, Amar, Tefillat Shachrit, even the morning prayer. Shneimar Hashem beboker tishma koli. King David says, God, in the morning hear my voice. Boker elach leitufalav esvona. I'm gonna wait for your salvation because I pray to you in the morning. Amar Rav Chadam, Amar Rav Amar Kol Anenu Misud Chatan Anenu Misam Chol Ver Bechamisha Kolot. Whoever goes ahead and attends a wedding and does not rejoice and make happy the bride and groom, he's going against five. Passages of the Tanakh. Shenemar kol sason ve kol simcha, kol chatam ve kol kala, kol omrim hodu et Hashem sevakot. So, you you whenever you attend a wedding, you need to make sure that you cheer up the uh, groom. And if you don't, you're going against five of the passages of the holy books. The im mesamcho. But if you do make him happy, my scharo, what's your reward? Amar of Shulam Levi, Zochele Torah. God's going to make you a Torah scholar, which is the most greatest thing. Shenatna bechamisha kolot. The Torah was given with five voices. Shenemar vayi bayom hashelishi biyot haboker vayi kolot ubrakim vayanan kaved al hahar bekol shofar vayi kol shofar bechem anenu bekor heavenly voices that came out to the Jews. Gemara says, Eini v'haketi v'chol ha'am ro'im et ha'kolot. It says that there were seven. It says no. Otam kolot dekotan matan Torah. Those were actually before the giving of the Torah. Rabbi Avau Amar Kilo hikriv korban Torah. Shneemar mevim Torah bet Hashem. It's like, it says like you brought a uh, thank you offering to God by making happy the bride and groom. Rav Nachman, it's like you built one of the broken walls of Jerusalem. Whoever has fear of heaven, people will accept his words. King Solomon says the whole goal of life is to fear God and keep his mitzvot. My kizekol ha'adam. What does it mean? This is all mankind. The whole world was created solely for the person that fears God. Rabbi Abba says no. He's he's equal to the whole. He's so valuable. He's equal to the whole world. He says the whole world. Is created to help this person carry out his mission of fear of heaven. It says, if you know that your friend is going to say hello to you, you you say hello to him first. If your friend tells you hello and you don't repeat hello back to him, you ignore him. It's like you stole from him. You stole from the poor person. The only thing you can steal from a poor person is his dignity because he doesn't have any money. 
But it's very important always, we learned it in the Pirkei Avot, to say Shalom before people say hello to you.